Income tax 2023-2024. Business use of your home. Figuring the deduction part number one. Get ready and some coffee because you're supporting an entire generation with your income tax preparation 2023-2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunchy numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin fit and healthy or anything however it does seem like it worked for her just saying so you know subscribe hit the bell thing and buy some merchandise so you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine if you would like a commercial free experience consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com most of this information can be found in publication 946 how to depreciate property section 179 deduction special depreciation allowance makers listed property and more tax year 2023 which you can find on the irs website at irs.gov irs.gov remember in the first half of the income tax formula basically a funny income statement most income statements having income minus expenses resulting in net income here having income minus various deductions resulting in the taxable income the sole proprietorship schedule c rolling into line one income of the formula the schedule c itself basically an income statement having business income minus business expenses which you could call business deductions resulting in in essence net business income which is what rolls in from the schedule c to line one income of the formula this formula outlining the calculation of the form 1040 of which we see the first page here, the Schedule C ultimately rolling into line number eight. Additional income from Schedule 1. This is the Schedule 1. Additional income and adjustments to income part number one. Additional income Schedule C rolling into line three. Business income or loss. This is the Schedule C. Profit or loss from business having a P&L profit and loss or income statement format where we have income minus expenses. We're looking at the expenses, which you could call business deductions, usually the largest category, having the most different types of things included within it. And some expenses are more complicated than others, such as the deduction related to the home, which we are figuring at this point in time. We did an overview on it in a prior presentation remembering that one of the complications is that we can't easily distinguish or separate between the bookkeeping for the business and bookkeeping for the personal so we need to determine whether or not our home office qualifies and once we do that we then would have to think about how are we going to differentiate the expenses that are for the entire home to break out the business portion from the personal portion remembering that the bookkeeping cannot ever be perfect to do that because no matter how good of a bookkeeper we have they won't be able to break out the expenses in accordance with the tax code generally therefore we on the tax side of things will typically have to do a bookkeeping type of adjustment for a tax adjusting entry to, to be able to deduct the deductions related to the home we're gonna have to get some way to track those deductions uh, that are usually like personal but have a business component to them on the bookkeeping side so that we can do the data input so that we can calculate the adjustment that calculation being different depending on the type of business but also depending on the type of home that we own do we own the home in which case we might have depreciation we might have mortgage interest deduction property taxes that would need to be allocated between the schedule a and the schedule c or do we rent the home in which case we have largely rent that we could uh, be dealing with which is usually an easier thing to do oftentimes than dealing with like depreciation and the allocation of real estate and property taxes between schedule a and schedule c and then the other things related to the home 
like maintenance and utilities and whatnot, we're going to have to allocate with some kind of ratio analysis, typically, no matter if we own the home or rent the home. All right. Figuring the deduction, let's dive in. After you determine that you meet the tests under qualifying for a deduction, you can begin to figure how much you can deduct. So now we're saying, hey, my office building or my office in my home qualifies. And now the question is, how do I figure the deduction? I can't just take it from, this, from the income statement, from the bookkeeping that's been done by the bookkeeper, because again, it's gonna to be too complicated to do that. We're gonna to have to do some adjustments. So when figuring the amount you can deduct for the business use of your home, you will use either your actual expenses or a simplified method. So you might see this as similar to kind of what we had with the automobile. I think that's probably what they were thinking when they came up with this simplified method. You will recall with an automobile, which you might be more familiar with, that you might be able to use a mileage method, which kind of takes into consideration all the average deductions instead of doing the more complex actual method. Uh, you can possibly do a similar thing here, although you would think there's gonna be a bigger uh, disparity difference between the different places in the country. So I think it might actually be a little bit more difficult to do that kind of calculation here. In other words, if I own a home in New York or California, the level of deduction you would think would be a lot higher because just the cost of living is higher than if I owned a home in some, uh, in some other location where the cost of the home might be lower and therefore the average that they must be using to figure out the simplified method might not cover the, the higher cost of living locations. So obviously you might wanna check and say, okay, where do I live? Let me do the calculation on both the simplified method and the actual method and see which one would be most beneficial to me. If you live in a high cost of living area, it's quite likely that you're gonna to wanna to do the actual method because you're gonna come up with a higher deduction possibly. All right, electing to use the simplified method. The simplified method is an alternative to the calculation allocation and uh, substantiation of actual expenses. It's easier, that's why it's simplified. Therefore, we don't have to be piling together these expenses, which probably are not on your bookkeeping for the business because they're usually personal. In other words, if I'm trying to separate my business books from the personal books on the bookkeeping side, when I pay the rent for my home, I probably do that on the personal side of things, not on the business side of things, because most of the home is used for business. Same with my utility bill and whatnot and so on and so forth. Now notice that some types of, of accounting software, for example, you could allocate the bill using class tracking, maybe between business or personal, or you might try to allocate out uh, and, and pay it out and allocate portion to the draws or something. So you could do some bookkeeping to kind of figure it out. But no matter what you do, I don't think the bookkeeping is going to be uh, perfect. And what we really need on our side for the tax side is the total expenses that were paid, business and personal, because we're going to have to do this allocation method with the tax forms in any case. So in any case, uh, you can try to eliminate that by using the simplified method in some cases but you wanna test it out and see if it's gonna be most beneficial. So you choose whether or not to figure your deduction using the simplified method uh, each tax year, see using the simplified method later. So unlike with the automobile, with the automobile, uh, notice that if you pick one method, you're more likely to be locked in to the method that you're going to use because you're dealing with something like, if you calculate depreciation, for example, especially if you take the 179 deduction upfront, then you're gonna to have to be locked into it because the IRS is going to say you, you need to be consistent with the depreciation you're using over, over that period. But with the home, uh, you don't have, you, you, you don't have that, that same uh, problem typically because you're looking at the expenses just related to the home. Now, if you do have depreciation on the home because you own the home, that could add a level of complexity that does run into issues with consistency problems, but if you rent the home, for example, it's not like you have the problem of putting it on the books and then depreciating it over the useful life. So you might be able to kind of go back and forth more easily between taking a simplified method versus the other method and therefore, or, or the actual method. And therefore you might, it's not as big a deal possibly to choose the proper method in the first year of operations because it'll lock you in 
going forward, you might be able to do the calculation each year to see which would be the most beneficial method then. Using actual expenses. Now for high cost of living pl places, this is probably the one that's gonna come out to a bigger deduction and therefore the one that you might end up using. So if you do not or cannot elect to use the simplified method for a home, you will figure your deduction for that home using your actual expenses. You will also need to figure the percentage of your home used for business and the limit on the deduction. So if you are a partner or you use your home in uh, your family business, and you file a uh, Schedule F, uh, Form 1040, you can use the worksheet to figure the deduction for business use of your home near the end of this publication to help you figure your deduction. If you use your home in a trade or business and you file a Schedule C, which is gonna be the examples most common that we're gonna be using here, uh, you will use Form 8829 to figure your deduction. So part year use, you cannot deduct expenses for the business use of your home incurred during any part of the year you did not use your home for business purposes. Now, this seems obvious, but it can add a level of complexity to the whole thing, right? So if you're saying, I only use the home as my office for like part of the year, four months out of the year, that's gonna mess up the whole allocation process because typically what we do is we figure out what were the expenses. For example, if you rented the home, what are the rent expense for the entire year and then allocate between business and uh, professional, uh, business and personal. But if you only worked on it, so, so now you've got business versus personal for the four months <laughs> that you actually ran the business and then you would think that you would get no allocation because you weren't using it for business at all for the months that were, were not in operation, right? That you didn't have the business on. So it's gonna add a level of complexity. Hopefully software can help us out with those kind of calculations. For example, if you begin using part of your home for business on July 1st and you meet all the tests from the date until the end of the year, consider only your expenses for the last half of the year in figuring your, dedu your, uh, figuring your allowable deduction. So generally, the process is going to be we come up with a ratio, possibly using square foot ratio to, s to determine the allocation between the, the business part of the home and the personal. And so usually we allocate that ratio to the expenses paid for the entire year. So you would think that if you didn't use it for the entire year, but only four months, then you would have to figure your total expenses, both business and personal, not for the entire year, but for four months, and then multiply that times the ratio would be the general idea. Expenses related to tax exempt income. So generally, you cannot deduct expenses that are related to tax-exempt allowances. However, if you receive tax-exempt uh, per, uh, personage allowance or a tax-exempt military allowance, your expenses for mortgage interest and real estate taxes are deductible under the normal rules. No deduction is allowed for other expenses related to the tax-exempt allowance. So if uh, your housing is provided free of charge and the value of the housing is tax exempt, you cannot deduct the rental value of any portion of the housing, which kind of makes sense because it's not actually, you know, like an expense in that situation if it's free of charge, but actual expenses. Plus this is somewhat of an unusual situation. So I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on it here, actual expenses. Okay, so you must divide the expenses of operating your home between personal and business use. So that's the clear, that's the problem that we, the basic problem that we have. We've got this thing that I can't, from a bookkeeping perspective, easily break out between business and personal because when I pay the bills, I pay for the whole thing, business and personal. So how do we break that out? That's gonna be the question. The part of the home operating expenses you can use to figure your deduction depends on both of the following whether the expense is direct, indirect, or unrelated. So now we're thinking, okay, we've got the business use of the home. What if the expense that we have is directly for the office, meaning I painted the office itself? Well, that would be a direct expense, you would think, and therefore you wouldn't need to really allocate that between the personal and business because it was all business, even though it's part of the home office, because you didn't paint the whole house, you only painted the office. But uh, if, it's, if it's indirect, 
then you're going to say that's the type of thing that we would have to use a percentage allocation. If I painted, for example, the outside of the house or something like that, or I put a roof on the home, well, now that is benefiting both the home office and the personal side of things. And therefore, you would have to use some ratio analysis, you would think. Or if it was an unrelated thing, if I painted the living room, which is not the home office part of the home, then you would think that I wouldn't get a deduction for that because I didn't paint the whole house. I painted the living room, which is not business related. Okay, so the percent of your home used for business. That's what we're gonna have to figure out. All right, so direct. So description, expenses only for the business part of your home. Deductibility, all of it's deductible typically. Examples, painting and repairs only in the area used for business. Uh, exception may, may be only partially deductible if a daycare facility, that's that weird exception one with the daycare because of, we'll, we won't dive into that here. Indirect, expenses for keeping up uh, and running your entire home. So examples, insurance, utilities, general repairs, deductible based on the percentage of your home. That's the ones that we have to allocate. Unrelated, expenses only for the parts of your home not used for business, not deductible typically. Examples, lawn care, painting a room not used for your business. All right, certain expenses are deductible to the extent they would have been deductible as an itemized deductible <laughs> deduction on Schedule A, or if claiming the standard deduction would have increased your standard deduction had you not used your home for business. If the expenses, expenses indirect, use the business percent of these expenses to figure how much to include in your total business use of the home deduction if you are itemizing your deductions on schedule a form 1040 these expenses include the following all right real estate taxes home mortgage interest casualty losses attributable to the federally declared disaster so these first two of course are the most common ones and if so if you have a home office, then either you rent your home, in which case you're dealing with rent, and that's actually a little bit easier, or you own the home. If you own the home, then generally, remember the idea is if it's your personal home, you don't get a deduction for your personal homes. That's not in alignment with normal uh, federal, like an income tax. But there's exceptions for the home ownership because of lobbying and politics and whatnot, right? So they give you a Schedule A deduction for the loan related to the home, and that's going to be the mortgage interest possibly deductible on the Schedule A if your Schedule A deductions are greater than the standard deduction. Also, you might be able to deduct state taxes, which include real estate taxes and local taxes, right? And that's going to be with the mortgage interest. So with the home office then, you already might have the deductibility related to the home of the mortgages interest and the real estate taxes, but it's on the Schedule A. Part of that's related to the business, so you might be able to deduct it on the Schedule C. You can't double dip. You can't deduct all of it on the Schedule A and the Schedule C. You have to break it out allocating between the Schedule A and uh, the Schedule C. That's the uh, general idea. Now, the other piece that of the deduction if you owned the home might be the depreciation of the home because even if you might have bought it outright for cash right so now you don't have any loan on it to deduct you bought the home and you would depreciate it generally if it was an office building now part of it is kind of like your home office you would think you might be able to get a portion of uh, the depreciation which is a bit complicated because that adjusts the basis of the home that you're in and whatnot which can come into play when you sell the home and whatnot but and that's going to be the idea. Okay. So if you are claiming the standard deduction, these expenses only include net qualified disaster losses that increase your standard deduction. In other words, if you own the home, even if you have a loan on it, the standard deduction was actually increased a few years ago to try to simplify the code. So you still might only be taking the standard deduction, in which case you're not getting a benefit from the real estate taxes or mortgage interest on the Schedule A and you would just be allocating the business portion to the Schedule C in a similar way as if you were renting the home. But there's an exception with casualty losses, which is kind of a weird exception, in which case you might still get a benefit that's kind of reported on the Schedule A and whatnot 
uh, related to the casualty loss. So in that case, it could be, a, again, a somewhat complicated allocation between the two because you get this benefit of the casualty loss and so on. But that's kind of a weird situation. So see the instructions for the worksheet to figure the deduction for business use of your home later in this publication or the instructions for Form 8829 for more information about figuring and deducting the business part of these otherwise allowable expenses. For more information about deducting real estate taxes, you can see Publication 530, Tax Information for Homeowners. For more information about deducting mortgage interest, you can see Publication 936. We've talked about these a bit in prior presentations or in uh, prior sections or courses. Uh, home mortgage interest deduction. And for more information about deducting casualty losses, you can see publication 547. That's that weird kind of situation. Again, we talked about it in prior courses or sections. Other expenses are deductible only if you use your home for business. If the business is indirect, use the business percent of these expenses to figure how much to include in your total business use of the home deduction these expenses generally include but are not limited to the following so we have casualty losses not attributable to a federally declared disaster depreciation discussed under depreciating your home later so again if you own the home that's when that depreciation comes into play, can, can get a little bit more complex than renting the home, which is a little bit easier because then you can just allocate the rent. Uh, insurance, so again, that's gonna be something for the entire home, so you would think you might be able to deduct part of that. Rent paid uh, for the use of property you do not own, but use in your trade or business. Repairs, uh, a security system, and then utilities and services, but see telephone later for different rules that apply to the telephone expenses because the telephone got kind of funny with these. Uh, it used to be you just have a telephone for the home, but now obviously the telephone is a little bit more complex with the way you're paying for the telephone, usually with a with a with a you know wireless phone. <laughs> what am I trying to say? A cell phone? A cell phone? Is that what you're trying to say? It's a pager or something? I don't know. Anyway, insurance. You, uh, you can deduct the cost of insurance that covers the business part of your home. So if you have insurance, the, again, you would think that would be for the entire home. You would think part of that home is your home office, so you would think you would be able to allocate part to the office. However, if your insurance premium gives you coverage for a period that extends past the end of the tax year, you can deduct only the business percentage of the part of the premium that gives you coverage for your tax year. So we're going into this prepayment thing again, meaning insurance by its nature means that you pay for it before you actually get the coverage. And it's often cheaper if you pay like a year in advance, but the IRS is skeptical of prepayments because they think you might be manipulating the tax code by paying stuff up front, And therefore you have to kind of convert to an accrual component basically saying this is the amount of the insurance for the year that we actually kind of consumed rather than when we paid for it and then apply the percent allocation business personal based on that you would think so you can deduct the business percent of the part that applies to the following year in that year so in other words you don't lose the deduction it's just that you have to allocate it on an accrual basis method so in the following year you would do that and you have to make sure that you have an accounting system that properly will be able to compensate for that. In other words, if you're a tax preparer and you have to do a tax adjusting entry saying that I can only deduct the portion of the insurance for the current year, you have to make sure that in the following year that you can you can deduct the other part, right? In the following in the following year, even though the cash was paid, you know, in the prior year. You can have to figure a way to do that accrual uh, component either in the bookkeeping system or as we do the tax adjustments at the end of the year for the for these items. So if you rent the home, you occupy and meet the requirements for business use of the home, you can deduct part of the rent you pay. So if you rent the home, it's easier typically because now you don't have the mortgage interest, you don't have the loan on it, you don't have the real estate taxes, you don't have to depreciate the property, you just pay for the rent. So that's why renting's easy. I like renting here, you just, you just pay the rent, and then you, you don't have to do, do the whole stuff and you call someone in to fix the thing when it breaks and whatever, and it's fine. And it's easier to, anyway, to figure your deduction, multiply your rent payment by the per 
percent of your home used for business. Straightforward, easy to do. So if uh, if you own your home, you cannot deduct the fair rental value of your home. However, see depreciation. In other words, if you own the home, then you can't just figure out what you would rent it for and deduct that. No, you have to depreciate it in a similar way as though you bought a business property, which again is kind of confusing a little, but we'll touch in on it possibly. We talked about the pre anyway, repairs. The cost of repairs that relate to your business include labor other than your own labor is deductible expense. So for example, uh, a, a furnace repair benefits the entire home. So now you're fixing part of the home, the furnace broke, you've got to fix the furnace. Obviously that's going to be a benefit to the entire home. So you would think that that repair bill would be something that you can allocate between the business and personal deducting the business portion. So if you use 10% of your home for business, you can deduct 10% of the cost of the furnace repairs. Now, remember, you might think from a bookkeeping standpoint, you might say, well, why don't I just do my bookkeeping allocating between business and personal? And you could do that, but you also want to make sure that you like you could use for QuickBooks, for example, class tracking that would allow you to basically possibly break out the the business and the personal and give the total. But you also want to see the total because when we do the data input, it's not like I just need to see the 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 business side of it, the 10%. I need to see the whole thing because I'm going to have to enter it into the tax form and show the allocation. So whatever the bookkeeping system you use with your bookkeepers and whatnot has to has to give you the full amount of the expenses for the year so that you can use the form which is going to do this percent allocation. So repairs keep your home in good working uh, order over its useful life. Example of common repairs are pitching walls, floors, painting, wallpapering, uh, repairing roofs and gutters, and mending leaks. However, repairs are sometimes treated as a permanent improvement and are not deductible. In other words, for example, if you own the home and they basically uh, do something like put a whole new roof on it or something, then that's not going to be a repair. It might be something that has to be included as uh, an improvement. You still might get a benefit from it, but it's going to be a lot less in the current year because you might have to put it on the books basically as an asset possibly and possibly get a benefit of the depreciation of it. And we saw that depreciation of real property is a long depreciation life, right? So, so it's going to get a lot less of a benefit if you have to put it on the books as an asset or improvement rather than just expensing it in the year of a repair, for example. Security system. If you install a security system that protects all the doors and windows in your home, that we need one of those around here, man. Tell you what, I need a security system watching my porch. And then it shocks people if they try to steal. Anyway, so you can deduct the business part of the expense you incur to maintain and monitor the system. So that would make sense security system protecting both the personal and the business side of things, you would think you can allocate the business portion. You can also take a depreciation deduction for the uh, part of the cost of the security system relating to the business use of your home. Utilities and services. Expenses for utilities and services such as electricity, gas, trash removal, cleaning services are primarily personal uh, expenses. However, if you use the part of your home for business, you can deduct the business part of these expenses. So obviously, the utilities then are going to be portion of the home for business. You would think that you could take the full bill and allocate part of it to business, which again, from a bookkeeping standpoint, is a little bit complex. Uh, because then the question is, should I be putting these on the business income statement or paying them out of the personal income statement can i break out between business and personal which again you can with some software using class tracking or something like that but again we want to see the full expense from the bookkeepers so that we can then do the allocation using using the form uh so i in in the tax return so generally the expense the business percent for utilities is the same as the percentage of your home used for business telephone so the basic local telephone service charge, including taxes for the first telephone landline, landline, what does that even mean? Do, do people have a line that's on the land? Whatever, man, what are you, a dinosaur? 
in any case, landline into your home is a non-deductible personal expense. However, uh, charges for business uh, long distance phone calls on that line, as well as the cost of your second line into your home used exclusively for business are deductible business expenses. So uh, do not include these expenses as a cost of using your home for business. Deduct these charges separately on the appropriate form or schedule. So obviously, if you have a, a phone line that's directly for a landline directly for business, for example, then you would think that would be a expense directed directly for the business. So for example, if you file Schedule C, Form 1040, deduct these expenses on line 25, utilities instead of line 30, expenses for business use of your home. Now, obviously a lot of people are gonna have a cell phone here and you might think of the cell phone as its own problem because once again, you have business versus personal usage, but the telephone might is no longer really connected possibly to the landline and therefore you might have a different situation with regards to like the cell phone bill versus say a landline bill. So uh, depreciating your home. So if you own your home and qualify to deduct expenses for its business use, you can claim a deduction for depreciation. So again, if you own the home, it's, it becomes a little bit more complex because then you're gonna be dealing with real estate taxes and usually mortgage interest. You might've bought the home outright. Maybe you don't have any mortgage interest. You would think, shouldn't I still get a deduction? Yeah, because if you bought like an office space, then you would, instead of renting an office space, if you bought it, you'd still get to expense it, not in the year that you purchased it, but in the form of depreciation. So now we have the depreciation expense for the home uh, okay, so that's the idea. Depreciation is an allowance for the wear and tear on the part of your home used for business. You cannot, de you cannot depreciate the cost value of the land. So depreciation becomes a problem to calculate oftentimes when it's your home because one, you might not have just bought the home. You might have bought the home, of course, in the past and now you're trying to use the home as an office and the question is, what should be the amount that I should be depreciating basically on the home. I'm gonna to have to kind of figure that out. And two, even if I just bought the home, I've got to figure out the portion of the home that is for the building versus the land because I cannot depreciate land. I can only depreciate the, the building portion of the home. How am I gonna figure that allocation? Because when I bought the home, I paid one lump sum, both for the land and building. Sometimes the property tax statement can help you with that because the property taxes will often make a make an allocation based on the portion that's building versus land. And you can use that same ratio, that same ratio analysis to figure out the building versus land portion possibly of, of uh, the home office. So, so that becomes an issue. Other thing to keep in mind, when you depreciate your home, there's a basis in the home that is going to come into play when you sell the home. Now, oftentimes there's a huge exemption if it was your personal home to sell the home, but uh, so 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 you might not end up with in a in a tax situation at that point. But it, the lower the basis is, the bigger the gain is. So when you depreciate the property, that's also adjusting the the basis calculation of the property, which is going to ha possibly have an impact when you sell the home. And also there's a little bit of a complication as well in terms of when you sell the property, part of the property was kind of being treated as business property versus the principal residence part of the property. So that could, so that basis adjustment when you sell the home, something to just kind of keep in mind as well that could, that another complication with regards to the whole depreciation of the home thing. So before you figure your depreciation deduction, you need to know the following information. The month and year you started using your home for business. So the adjusted basis and fair market value of your home, excluding land, at the time you begin using it for business. So that becomes, again, somewhat of an issue to try to figure out what the cost is and the breakout at the time you used it. The cost of any improvements before and after you begin using the property for business. So this is similar to when you sell the home and you're trying to figure out the basis of the property. It's not something that you're typically tracking 
because it's not like a business expense. You don't have a depreciation schedule for it as you would if it was business property, which you're forced to have a depreciation schedule for because you have to put it on the books as an asset and allocate the cost over its useful life. If it's your home, you're not really tracking the cost and allocating it over its useful life because you don't get a deduction for it. So you're gonna have to go back and figure, okay, how much did I purchase the home for? And then were there improvements on the home which are gonna increase possibly the basis of the home, which could be the part of the amount that could be depreciable and then figure out the breakout between business and professional, possibly with the help of the property tax statements, which might give you some percent allocation between the two. Okay, so the, the percent of your home used for business. So that of course is similar we need to know the, the ratio allocation business versus personal, which you would need to know whether you rent or own the home. So adjusted basis defined. The adjusted basis of your home is generally its cost plus the cost of any permanent improvements you made to it minus any casualty losses or depreciation deduction in earlier tax years. So this is depreciation concepts. We usually buy something if it was a business item, we put it on the books as an asset and then allocate the cost over its useful life instead of depreciating it up front. If it's a home, then we don't get a tax benefit from it because it's a personal piece of property typically. But if we are now saying that it's business use or at least part of it, we'd have to do the same thing. We need to get that, that depreciable portion of it uh, that has the potential energy, the potential tax benefit, the potential deduction and that's gonna be the cost plus the improvements minus any basically benefits that we have already gotten, such as casualty losses or depreciation deduction in earlier years to get the adjusted basis, the potential deduction that we might be able to allocate at least to the business per portion over its useful life into the future, which is a pretty long useful life because it's real estate. So for a discussion of adjusted basis, you can see publication 551, basis of assets.